Hey everybody, I'm Yendi and this is Odyssey with Yendi, Untold Journeys, where I speak with some of my favorite people and have some shape-shifting conversations. Here, they share their stories leaving nuggets of goodness and life lessons to motivate and inspire our own life's journeys. Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys is brought to you in partnership with Sagicor. Buying a home? Score big with a Sagicor Bank Mortgage. It's easy. Find your property, apply for your Sagicor Bank Mortgage, get your keys in no time, and your home! MasterCard. Make online purchases in a safe way with Debit MasterCard. Let the passion of football find you everywhere. MasterCard. Start something priceless. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life. With one of the most distinctive sounds to come out of Jamaica and hits that will already stand the test of time, this reggae songstress peels back the layers to reveal the beautiful soul that is Leela Ike. Leela. What's up, Andy? How are you? Medea, I give thanks for life. Mm -hmm. By the way, I don't know if me or my daughter are more excited for this sit down. Hey, Izzy. <laughs> oh, oh, it's over now. You're not getting up at school the next day, right? She's going to be Look like. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, thank you. He said, give thanks for life. I feel mm -hmm. like we're in a phase of our life where. <laughs> Some days it feels like that's all we have, the ability just to just me. give thanks that we're yeah. here. Um, walk me through what these days been feeling like for you. Um, January roller coaster still. Yeah. Trust me, it's been, it's been a roller coaster. Um, there are days when me literally don't want to get up out of bed, mm -hmm. you know. I feel like today is the the prettiest I've felt in a while. I don't mm. know if I can't do my face and thing, but. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you look know, it's, lovely. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. It's been, it's my vibe's been up and down. Yeah, you know, and up is like here, <laughs> right? Know, it's like, not even your typical yeah, exactly. up, right? So, but we navigate and we roll through same mm. way. It's also it's the fact that one of the things that you love the most, yeah, is music. Yeah, and the inability to do the thing that makes you feel, <coughs> you like know, life. Yeah. Cause you know you bring only life when you're on stage. <laughs> yeah. Can we? Are, are we gonna talk about this now, or do we talk about this later? Your Can't performance ability, you know. girl. Where Yo. does that come from? Um, I often say I feel as though when I'm performing, I'm a different person. Cause yeah. I, I'll actually like watch back my sets and be like, Yo, what the hell was I doing? <laughs> like, yeah. why am I jumping from there to there and thing? But you know, it's just that freedom you get and mm -hmm. being in your element and like live music does something to me personally. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's, it's very freeing for me. It's the most free I feel. Mm. When did you realize that music was one of your love languages? Ooh. <laughs> All right, Yendi. Listen now, you better <laughs> quote me when you use that in the future. <laughs> um, music as a love language, that's, that's, that's quite interesting. Um, so the first time I realized that I was really into music, I want to say I was probably between six or seven. Because mm. my mother, she, she normally play like reggae music around the house all the time. Yeah. So I grew up here in Garnet Silk, Sizzler, Buju, everybody. And I was listening to a Garnet Silk song, but he wasn't singing. He was just like chanting over like uh, Naya Bingi. And I remember just getting goosebumps. Like, mm. you know, you're young and you're wondering, you know, how is this having this effect on me? Mm -hmm. And I feel like since that day, I started paying attention to sounds. So like I started listening to music and sometimes even, you know, like subtract the voice from the, the vocals from mm -hmm. the track and try to listen to what the guitar is doing, the bass yes. is doing. And then I grew up in a house where like the TV was there, but it never turned on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold you on, know? anything was on it to turn on? That's why it never no, turned man, on? No, it was or? a very, very functional TV. Just I want to say it. it was probably brand new, still in a plastic, <laughs> knowing my mother. Mad. <laughs> but um, she just never turned the TV on. She yeah. was just obsessed with music. So I listened to a lot of music. And, you know, I, you have nothing else to do. You yeah. There's nothing to watch. So you kind of create everything yes. within your mind's eye. And 
I just fell in love with that. And then my mother always have this thing where when she's cleaning, which is all the time, you know, yeah, she sing along to the records. And, you know, growing up with a single mom, that's how I kind of, a single mother we kind of emotionally detached to. Uh -huh. So that's how I, I bonded with her. So I made her sing along to everything. Mm. And when she realized that I do that now, she'd always want me to sing over the song. So like a Celine Dion, she want me to sound like Celine Dion. Whitney Houston, she'd ask me to sing a song and, you know, sound like them. So that's how I feel like that was my training vocally because mm -hmm. never in a choir, nothing like that. Really? So not even when you went to school? Mm-mm, because... My mother never believed in uh, extracurricular activities. Really? It's just like school starts at 7 and end 3, you need to be home by 3.30 the latest. And that was it? That was Routine. it. Routine. I remember the, 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 um, the choir director at the time, I think it was Adele. You know Adele, right? Yeah. He was like my, my, the choir director and also a music teacher at Manchester at the ah, time. I was there. Okay. Yeah, man, big him up. And I remember him saying, yo, we really need you for this, you know, talk to your mother. I can talk to your mother about it. And we go home and I try to convince her. And the minute she asks, you know, what time, what time is it going to start? And what time is choir practice going to end? It's like, no, nope. no, no, no. She needs to be home by a certain time. So. Do you think she was ultra protective because you were all girls? And as a yeah. single mom, she felt it even more important to make sure, say, her daughter them under yeah. her roof? For sure, that definitely had a part to play. Just having sisters, you know, yeah. growing up with just her, my three sisters, one older sister, two younger sister. And then I feel like she also projected a lot of, you know, her experiences. Because, right. you know, I, I'm, I'm 27. I have an older sister that's like a year and a half older than me. And my mom is like 46. So, so if she you do was the young she had you She was very young when she had us. And so I feel like mm -hmm. she's like, that now reach we, you know? And right. her way of doing that is just... Yeah. Yeah. Did you resent that any at all? Yeah, man, by the time you reach high school, actually, let's say university. Because yeah. I started NCU, didn't finish. But um, by the time I was in university and I, I now have friends who live on dorm and yeah. there are things happening at school and you just can't be a part of it. Mm -hmm. At that point now, yeah, I say, well, and what is this life? Mm -hmm. Meaning if I have, she'd know my classes. So if I have class from eight to one, mm -hmm. I have to be home by the time mm -hmm. classes are done. So it starts to feel, you know, ridiculous and you're mm -hmm. like, yo, what is my life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most unusual things you'd get into that people would least expect? All right, if I can remember um, vividly, you know, I, I, just the things my sisters were into, I wasn't. So when they'd be playing dollhouse or whatever, I'd probably just be gathering sticks to make something, <laughs> you know, like get nail and ham and I build a whole fort outside my grandmother's house. And I'd find like inanimate things to play with and kind of yeah. give life to. So I'll actually sit down and play with a rock for the whole day and actually have a conversation with the rock. Really? Like my great grandmother, Auntie Nelly, my soul rest in peace, she used to think something wrong with me, <laughs> you know? But yeah, I've always been very strange. And like I had male cousins at the time that lived next door that I would always just want to do with them. I do them a fly kite. I want to fly kite to them. I go pick apple or whatever. That's, <laughs> that's what I want to do. How much chippy have you? have plenty scars. You need them chip up. Boy, my skin clean still, <laughs> thank God. No, but how you get away with that? Because if you ever see my knees, my girl. <laughs> no, no, no. I guess I just have good skin after a while. It kind of just... But <laughs> yeah, fade. I, have, I have a scar on my knees still from... Playing. I think I was I was playing football one time when I when I was in university and I fell. Road rash. Yeah. <laughs> um, at what point? So we know that you're at NCU. At what point are you just like, mm, I don't know. If this is my path. Music is my path. Where did that happen for you? Um. So everything sort of happened naturally. You know, even yeah. even with um, school. After I finished high school. It wasn't my choice to like get to NCU. I wanted to come to Kingston. That's where all my friends were, ah. Jamila, Dea, Yui, everything. And I'm like, okay, made I get for not living the house and have my own little thing. But my mother had just come home one day and she's like, all right, you know, say, may I talk to one of my friends and them say, NCU is a good school. <laughs> and then me I say, hold on, that's like, 
20 minutes from my high school. <laughs> you know, Miss Tila got there in Manchester and she's mm -hmm. like, yeah, man, you can just come home every evening because I was already speaking to her about moving to Kingston and starting mm -hmm. school here. I can, I can remember there was a girl from a community who had started university and she came home one weekend and her head was bald. So my mother just associate that with, oh, ah. you're going to Kingston now, you're going to come back a brand new person. So yeah, she chose mm. what I should study. You know, she came to the orientation with me. I actually remember one of the teachers were like, so what are you studying? Because my mom looked very young, you know? And <laughs> yes. she's like, no, 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 I'm just there with my daughter, you know? So she chose it and think I'm like, all right, you know, I, I've, I'll never, I've never argued with my mom about anything. Mm. I'm just like, whatever she say goes. So started NCU and at no point was I like, oh, this is not what I want to do with my life. Mm. It was always like, this is what my mom wants. Got you. you yeah. Know? yeah. So studying and I actually got into it because usually for me, it's like whatever it is that I'm doing, I just do it. Right. And just kind of focus on that. But then financially she was struggling. Got so you. I had to stop. And then that's when I decided that I'm going to try and get a job. She wanted me to get a job around Christian uh, Mandeville area. I was like looking elsewhere. You still look you know? town. Yeah, <laughs> like this is a perfect opportunity yeah, yeah. to dip, you know? <laughs> so at the time I had no idea what call centers were. My idea of a call center is I have my own office, I sit down like this every day, take a phone call. <laughs> Spin in your chair. Everything nice, you know? <laughs> so sent out some applications, heard about Sutherland got the job and even the transition from Christiana to Kingston was very rough like really yeah man me and my mother proper followed the day when I was moving to Kingston remember my pack my bags and everything spoke to her about it but not like the thing is when when having a conversation with my mother you have to I don't know you have to style it in a way to get what you want right. without going too deep. I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but right. you don't get a yes, but you don't get a no. Right. So I'm like, all right, may I work with the facts eh? If I don't get a no, it means I can go. Right. Um, the day when I was moving now was a Sunday and my sisters were getting ready for church. Me, I packed my bag for go Kingston, you know, I was going with a friend of mine who was at UTEC at the time and she was moving you now to start school at UTEC so I could hitch a ride with her. Mm. So I packed my bags and everything, not like bring all my stuff, but right. just enough to get me through the interview and, you know, um, pack my bag and I just tell my little sister them, say, yo, may I go? I only can tell her, say. Because <laughs> I just I just felt like, you know, mm -hmm. this was not going to be easy. Yeah. I mean, I tell you, like, all I can remember is that I have been in the corner for leave and I just see my mother run and come, hey, where you go? She ran me down, took out the clothes out of my bag, bawling, said, where may I go to town, go do? I feel like she thought I had a boyfriend or something, or right. I run away with her or something. And um, anyway, I just tell myself, say, it's either now or never. Mm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's the first time I could ever do anything that's like standing up to my mom or whatever. Right. So it's like, me tell myself, say, boy, I'm still a going, okay? Nothing is happening here. I'm at home every day. Yeah. You know, I don't want to work in you know, like a cashier position or whatever. And then, as I said at the time, I didn't know what a call center was. Right. You know, so in my head, it's like I have a proper job at a proper institution well, or whatever. Nice. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I just decided I'm going. And then being here in Kingston now, I have the freedom now to go out. And, right. you know, I have friends who were connected to people within the music industry. So I get to kind of exercise my freedom and my mm -hmm. element then. And, you know, we start go anywhere, anywhere, anything is happening. If it's a jam session, if it's a karaoke. Once there's an open mic. Once there's an open mic, <laughs> yeah, I'd be there. And, yeah. you know, things kind of branch off from that. I just remember waking up one day and protege messaged me, say, you know, and he's heard something and think I have a lot of potential and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so funny how you casually say the rest is history because yeah. that history for you 
I know is way more layered than just yeah. the rest is history because yeah, I know me. that you you have a different level of ratings and respect for OJ and yeah, man. his contribution to your career and to your personal development. Walk me through a bit of that. There's a lot of insecurities I had around around personally myself and mm -hmm. you know being in the music. And, and everything and it was having somebody like that who clearly experienced clearly already gone out in the world and just knows music yeah. it's like having that reassurance really helped me um so going back to when he first reached out you know i remember checking twitter he said no man i'm really see <laughs> if i am <hear> this <laughs> if i protege this and you know you see the blue tick so i say all right and I, I remember the first night we linked up he was like you know I have a little home studio and him just want to link up, see my vibe, see what, what my plan is or whatever. Mind you, I never had a plan. Right, <laughs> I'm right. just doing music, like I'm just going to these sessions, these jam sessions and everything with like all the other artists that I was meeting at the time, you know, Black Hero, Royal, Blue Runkus, all of them. And it was just something fun to do, yeah. you know, in between stressing myself out at a call center. And then I had started back school, so I started UE and it was just a lot. Yeah. But that was like my little hobby thing to get into, but I loved it, you know. So I remember, you know, I think I was at the movies <laughs> and he came and got me from there and went back to his place and started playing some rhythm. And, in my head, I'm just like stressing, like, Lord God, like, I protege this, you know, like, I mean, even make sure I say, wherever may I sing, both, you know? And so, that's actually out of that vibe that I came up with my first two singles, Biggest Fan, Gotti Gotti. And to me, it was just like a freestyle, like a vibe, just, yeah, you know, yeah. to make him see what kind of vibe me depend on. I remember him saying that, all right, so this is what we're gonna do, you know? Biggest Fan's gonna be your first single. We we'll put that out and observe from there and then automatically everything just start makes sense. Mm. You know, I, I really I wouldn't know what to do if I was to like handle my career right. on my own. And right. I really never had a plan. Yeah. You know? And so we put out Biggest Fan and you know it started getting a lot of traction. People were like, yo, this new girl. And then you know, he's keeping his shows, he bring me out and thing and you know, we move from Biggest Fan to Gotti Gotti. But even before we got there, I remember the first time I ever traveled, the first time I ever did like, no, big performance. As in leave Jamaica, leave any, at Jamaica all. any at all. Oh my god! Yeah, he was on tour in, <laughs> in the UK. And, you know, I had sorted out a little visa and thing. And was it's the little visa for me. <laughs> I was said. just planning to travel and thing. And he's like, yo, you know, say, my day you should link up. And he's like, me, I say, you know, that's, that's amazing. This, the biggest fan wasn't even out officially yet. Yeah. It was just a song that we had planned to put out around May. And mm. I think his tour had started, I don't know, in a March or something along yeah. that line. And so I got very excited for dip on the tour and thing. But then I went and like, she said, okay, it's a proper thing. Yes. There's like a tour bus, there's crew, the band member, everybody. and. It just did it like, and at the time, Seven, I was also right. already in and I'm seeing her doing her thing. And it's like me, I say, yo, so, you know, how, do, how am I going to fit in the mix? Nobody knows about me yeah. or anything. But even from then, he'd always, you know, be very like, you know, just encouraging me. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. You got this, you know, I see a lot of potential for you. Trust me, in five years, I can see you going, you're going to be something, you know. You're and what year be. was this? This was in 20... Either the end of 20, this 2018 or 2017, around that time. And I mean, it's been. I was going to say, I was gonna, look where we <laughs> yeah. are. Look so, where we are. Yeah, man, I remember him saying, like, trust me, in five years, you are going to be somebody worth talking about in, in the music industry. Yeah. And I remember, like, every night before the shows, I used to get really bad anxiety. Really? Yeah, man, even now, sometimes. But you know, we'd never be able to tell because you're yeah. so good on stage. Yeah. You'd never be able to tell. Trust me, it was rough. Like, I remember, I'd, I, I remember being backstage and just hearing the songs. And, you know, I, I can always remember when it's like two songs before my time. I'm a Serati. <laughs> I just go backstage and I remember just gulping down anything I can find. You mm -hmm. know, like a honey, like a wine, something for mm -hmm. kind of 
loosen myself up and... You know something I got to ask you, and I know nobody has ever asked you this, but I'm going to go there. Your yeah. belly twist up? Trust me. Like, I always like want to go to the bathroom. You... Yes, listen! The heart a race, and then for me, it was like, <laughs> all right, I'm firing me there, I perform right now. Yeah, yeah. The song I'm about to perform, it's not sung in English language, you know, like... Right. The, Apart to what most of the lyrics in you know, her. She don't know how they may receive it. I'm like, yo, I really don't know if people are going to understand what I'm singing about. And yeah. I think the first show was in Manchester, mm. in England. And he's like, yo, just do your thing. Do your thing. Yeah. Came out and like, I don't know where the people him know me from, but it was like, as <laughs> soon as he introduced me, everybody excited and, you know, the rest of the nights kind of followed like that. But trust me. It's it's it was it's a really amazing thing for have somebody like that on the journey because mm -hmm. it's not like him just see somebody who is talented. Like this is somebody I share a lot about like my personal history, like yeah. family history and everything with yeah. he's actually experienced it. Right. You know, he's come to my house, met my mother and everything and so I feel like I don't even feel like I know that for him it's ensuring that Alicia Gray is, is okay beyond mm. even the music. Well, you know, I love that you said that because yeah. I feel like people often forget that the persona on stage is not the individual who goes home yeah, to their family me. and their friends. And yeah. what is Alicia like? What, tell me a little bit about Alicia. Um, Alicia, no. Alicia Gray. <laughs> Boy, it's even awkward to talk about myself, but as I say, it's not the persona that, that people see on stage. Yeah. For some reason, as I say, whenever it is that I'm performing or whenever it is that I'm supposed to show up and do something, I know how to just snap, or I've learned over time how to just snap into it and, mm -hmm. and get it done. But sometimes after that performance, Alicia is backstage, even under the stage sometimes, bawling. I can remember in i think this was 2018 we all had a show in sweden me protege Sevana, and it was just around the time when second chance had just came out mm -hmm. and during this time for some reason i was having a bit of um difficulty performing on key okay right so i'd often go off key like i'd have it locked in a rehearsal, but for some reason, when we go up on stage, something would have gone wrong. Yeah. So I never performed. It was a day that Second Chance came out that I had the show. So I, I, I've never performed it openly before. And I think, I can't remember if there was a rehearsal. More than likely there probably was. But do the show, sing all of the song them, and then it was time to introduce, you know, the big song. I may I tell you, say, <laughs> We end up in a proper reggae ditch. Like, that's it's oh, like an ongo ongoing oh joke gosh. where we have. Where, like, <laughs> you just end up in a ditch and there's just no coming back. Mm -hmm. Like, the song key de yaso. And you they're all the way up confidently singing this. Oh, no. And I remember me come off stage and then Diggy's normally the person where he always going to make me feel good, right? Like, say, yo, how's that performance there? And even if it's not like, a hundred percent, I say, yeah, you know, it could have, yeah, you get me? But I just remember his comment was, you're not good, G. <laughs> <laughs> say, I'm sorry, I don't mean to know. <laughs> Trust me. Like that day, Stress out. I can remember, there's actually a picture of me sitting underneath the stage while he's performing. I mean, I tell him, my ball, my ball, my ball, my ball, my ball. My ball so till because in my head I'm like, yo, how am I gonna fix this? Because yeah. I can't identify what the issue is because it's not like I don't know what the key right, is. Right. I'm doing it right in rehearsal, but then by the time I go on stage and I think that was like the first few signs of me realizing that I have, you know, really bad anxiety car. Right. It just clouded everything. But right. trust me, proper cow balling underneath the stage. You know, and I, and the thing is that after having those experiences, it will sometimes last for weeks. I'll go in like a proper depressive episode, right. thinking right. I'm the worst artist on earth. The yeah. amount of time they have to coach me. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. the amount of time I've wanted to not be an artist. Right. Proper phone call, like, what you know? This is not for me. I can't do this. 
like the song them sound like shit if i'm allowed to say that say what you, you say to me and say, yeah. i remember when where i'm coming from was supposed to come out and met the song excited about the song and the night before it was just supposed to be released i'm at his house from like about eight in the night to five in the morning i try to convince him say don't put, it don't put it out because people are not going to get it. I refuse it and to believe that about me. that song. No, I refuse. <laughs> My girl. Yeah, man, where that I'm coming from. That song is literally <laughs> legendary. And you it really almost, felt that way about trust it? Trust me, because the thing is that, I don't know, like, when I first started doing music, it was like, okay, this is fun. I, I love doing this. I'm able to live my dream. Oh my God, I'm traveling. But then, I started piling on the expectations because the more ah, the more we go out there and the more people start say, Wow, oh my god, you're you're gonna be huge, you know, you're gonna be a thing. Wow, you're amazing. It's like it's they start art. stuck the, the expectations mm -hmm. them and then I, I, I judge myself like rigidly. Hardcore. Mm -hmm. You get to me and say? You're your worst critic. Trust me. Yeah. So me remember it was biggest fan, gotti gotti, second chance and then where I'm coming from and second chance for me was the first time I personally feel like I start get proper recognition right. within the space. Like, right. you know, it's, it was a, re it's a, it is, for me, I can confidently say that it is one of the best reggae songs to come out of Jamaica, you know? Louder. No, no, ask no question. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you clearly. What you said a while ago? One of the I greatest feel like the, songs. <laughs> with, with a scratch, what you said? Yeah, man, one of the best, one of the best <laughs> piece of music to come out of Facts. Jamaica from our generation. Facts. So. Yes. It was a thing, you know, everybody are like, yes. okay, so, you What's know. What's going to come next? You know, and then yeah. when you start go out and people start recognize you, even like other artists, mm -hmm. we're like, oh, yeah, man, are you have the fall in love tune there, re, re, you know, it was <laughs> like, okay, so I'm a thing now. All right, so that means that the next song has to be way, way better than Second Chance. And, you know, and, and the thing about how I make music, I never make it from a point like, all right, so I'm going to make, make sing Second Chance. Me for write a song now, but it was never right, that. Right, right. You know, it, it's always like I hear a beat and the song come to me. I hardly write music. Mm -hmm. Like if you physically sit down and pen out, I can't do that. Right? So the song come to me excited, send it to Diggy like, yo, the song you have a vibe, you know, Kaspa said that he's a producer. Mm -hmm. He's like, trust me, this one is going to be the mm. one and everything. And love the song for the first three weeks after recording it, listening it every day and I'm a car all about a plate in the house. And then the night before it would come out, I'm You're like... You're talking yourself out of it. But you know that wasn't yeah. you. You know that. <laughs> Boy. It's not you, you know. Yeah. It's, you know, when you have a perfectionist thing about you, mm -hmm. when you have a, when you're a big dreamer, you feel like you have a hard time failing. Is that yeah. is the fact that you don't want to fail? Yeah. You will talk yourself out of yeah. something. Meanwhile, you're literally sitting yeah. on gold. Yeah, true. Because that song is everybody's anthem. You yeah. know that. It is. It trust me. Like a lot of people, even like young youth from the garrison. Yes, man. You know, come to me and say that song. They save them. You no, know? but I don't. Yes. <laughs> And not even just the garrison, I'm saying that regardless of where you're from, yeah. regardless of your age yeah. and your demographic, there's something about that song that makes chills run up your spine. Because yeah. I feel like we can hear in the song what you feel, what you are yeah. feeling. Make sense? Yeah. It is, it is for sure. Yeah. I, I definitely made that song out of just literally remembering yeah. where I'm coming from because how the song even came about, I was doing some dub plates for Second Chance. Right. And I just I look at myself and I'm like, yo, you know, couple, just couple, about two years ago or so, I'm, I'm, I just come Kings and I have no idea, yeah. you know, what I'm going to be doing with my life. I have no idea how I'm going to be taking care of myself, but you know, I have tours lined up, you know, like crazy things happening. So I'm like, yeah. you know, this I need to just make a song that that embodies everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you feel <clears throat> the fact that you know you've openly shared how anxious you get to go on stage? You've also openly shared how quickly you rose. Yeah. So it's almost like you've now you are learning this space and you are growing in the space, but you are doing it under microscope. Yeah. How has that impacted you? 
that um it's def it definitely stresses me out yeah to be honest even in ways that i'm learning about myself over time yeah. and it's recently that i realized how much how hard is how hard it is to be you know just learning and growing in front of everybody yeah you know and dealing with your own personal issues so for instance i just learned um well like a couple weeks ago that i have bipolar disorder okay. i was formally diagnosed with that and it's something that i've been experiencing for a while yeah and didn't even recognize what was happening to me right. like i after an extreme high or, or or coming off of a stage or learning about a big accomplishment i almost always go into feeling depressed yes you know and it yeah. would be something that it, it would have to be like even protege would be like but lila trust me you know this is going for you and that's going for you and it's like everything that you accomplish and all of your your skills and your talent it just get cloudy like i can't see beyond yes. it you know and you get extremely low mm -hmm. and you just don't want to do it anymore yeah so even with everything that went down you know a couple of weeks ago in the media people saying all sorts of things um i have moments when i just can't sleep mm -hmm. you know and until recently i didn't know what was happening to me so i would go four or five days with no sleep at all no. And I'm thinking, no man, we're just inspired and, 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 and I'm just, um, what do you call it, insomniac or something, you know? But I would just want to be up and there's no way to, to calm myself down. Mm -hmm. There's no way to, unless there's somebody around me who understands what's happening, right, right. who knows that, okay, she's getting into one of those episodes. Into one of those episodes yeah. So... Yeah, so recently, you know, I had one of those moments, wasn't sleeping, um, kind of seemed to just steady myself and calm myself down, mm -hmm. you know. So within that moment, you know, I'm scared, I'm, I'm paranoid, I'm thinking, all right, the only way to protect myself is if I go on my live, because there's no way it's going to hurt me in front of what everybody watching, okay. right? So I went on my live and... At this point now, I'm crying, telling people that, yo, you know, they're trying to kill me. I need y'all to save me. Somebody called Protégé, Jazzy Lee, Savannah, somebody. And these are all people that, I mean, I could have just picked up my phone and, and called. And in this moment, I have... The only reality I know is what is happening, is what I'm feeling. Right. Right. So I, I don't know anything other than the fact that he's trying to kill me and I need to find a way to save myself. So after, you know, being on my live, Jazzy Lee's side, she quickly came to the studio. Uh, my stylist side, she came to the studio also. And, you know, they brought me down um, back to my house. And my grandmother had come at this point and Everybody was just trying to get me to calm down, trying to get me to go inside. But nobody understood what, what was, was happening. happening, you know? Nobody understood what was happening. And then my grandmother coming now, she's the only person that I felt I could trust because she's right. family. Right. She has no idea that ah. everything I'm saying to her is just me having a manic episode. So she's actually encouraging what was happening. Right. You know, she's also scared for me. Long story short, the day ended in a bunch of tweets, you know, me tweeting that, you know, people are trying to poison me, they're trying to kill me. And that tweet that, you know, went out and that's the only thing that the media was right. portraying. You know, I, after, after getting back home, you know, my mother came and got me. I went home, I was taken to the hospital, got some medication and everything. At that point, I was formally diagnosed with bipolar disorder. 
and I was told that, you know, you were actually having a manic episode. And a couple of days in, I didn't even know exactly what was going on. Right. It wasn't until I came back around and, you know, got a call from Protégé. He's telling me that, yo, this is what's happening. Right. And trust me, since all of that, it's been, it's been a lot because everything that I stand for and everything that I believe in, I've put it in my music. Right. Get what I said? Yeah. My main purpose here is to just make music that inspire people, music that inspire the youth them, music that is positive, music that is uplifting. That's literally all I'm trying to contribute. But you, you know, know, now you're contributing so much more yeah. because now there are a bunch of people who will now feel seen, who will feel validated and will feel like they are not abnormal. Yeah. Um, managing your mental health and navigating this beautiful gift that you have. It's, it's such a beautiful gift. Thank you. Um, how does Leela now learn her triggers and learn how to make sure that she stays in a place where her soul is always at peace and at ease? Yeah. Um, I'm going through the healing process as we speak. Yeah. You know, I completely remove myself from social media. I haven't been on Instagram, Twitter, anything, because I know that, you know, going in those spaces, I know what to expect. I know what I'm going to see. So that's the first thing that I did. Um, secondly, as I said, um, I'm now learning that, you know, after just observing and replaying everything that happened to me, in my head, I'm just tracing it back to, okay, so this started with you not sleeping. Right. Right? Right. And then the thing is, Wendy, this isn't the first time I had a manic episode. I just wasn't aware. Got you. The first episode was in 2018. Oh, wow. Same thing happened. And this time I was actually um, our own protege. So, you know, he was able to observe it and thing and... Um, I just remember the same thing, just feeling very paranoid, feeling very scared, thinking everybody's out to get me. And at that time I was using marijuana a lot. Okay. Right? So in my head, I'm thinking, all right, I just smoked somebody. Somebody, somebody laced Somebody laced thing. me. Yeah. For a while, that, that's what I was thinking. Right. And that even made me extremely paranoid with mm -hmm. like being around people. Of course. And yeah. all that. I stopped smoking for a while, you know? So first time I had the episode then and went to the hospital. I wasn't diagnosed, but they told me that it was a drug induced psychosis. Ah. So that even made me think more, say, all right, it's something, definitely, the, the, it's mm -hmm. definitely the, the, the weed. Mm -hmm. So, um, protege being there and observing that, um, it's the reason why between 2018 to now to, well, last year when I released my first project, we only released one single. And this is something I'm learning recently after having a conversation with him. He's like, yo, after seeing what you went through that first time, you know, mm. I ensure that I slowed down your career. You know, I made sure that one song per year, basically, see how well you're able to manage that. And then we can get into more shows and managing everything else. So really and truly, I've just been at home thinking like, just really doing a lot of research, reading a lot on mental health, reading a lot about bipolar disorder, and just realizing that right now my lifestyle is going to be have to is going to have to be centered around that. You know, I have to develop a routine. I have mm -hmm. to stay in the gym. I have to ensure that I'm eating properly. Right. I have to filter in resting because yes. that's something that. If I don't feel like sleeping, I'm not going to sleep. And that will be, that's one of your triggers. Yeah, I'm not going to sleep. Sometimes even protege would have to call me up and be like, some, I'll be on my live right. for hours. <laughs> like yeah. people who follow me know that I will be on my live from in the morning, so straight in, in to the like, morning. in the morning. <laughs> and yeah. in those moments, I'm thinking, you know, it's natural. I'm just, you know, I'm just vibing, but really and truly like, if I keep if I keep that up well. for like the next four days, you're neglecting yourself. Exactly. Yeah. But so you know what I do like? I yeah. do like that someone is in your corner enough yeah. to not say, money, 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 yeah, hits, yeah, hits, yeah. hits. This is what Trust we're doing. Me. But 
Alicia yeah. comes first and it will navigate music around what Alicia's soul needs. I think that's, yeah. that's critically important. Trust me, like, I'm very, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for Proce yeah. James. He's been there, yeah. you know? He's really been there, really been looking out for me, really trying to help me even with myself sometimes yes. that I, I don't even notice what I'm doing. Because yeah. I'm just in my head, I'm just like, yo. I, he will literally see me on a live and be like, yo, think it's time you need to get off. No, you need to get some sleep. Because he said to me that the first time it happened, he noticed that my eyes like look different. Because when you're wired and mm. manic, you know, you're just mm. completely out of it. So he's like, anytime he notice any slight change in my, my attitude towards certain things he knows what's coming so yeah. and usually me then i'll be like yo me just me not ready for like why me know yeah. i got you know mm -hmm. but it's it's really i'm really grateful that everybody around me the entire team his mom claire everybody really and truly believes in you know my talent and what i have to offer and everybody's really looking out for my well-being so i don't know why but i just felt very compelled in my spirit eh? to say to you, it takes nothing away from you. Yeah. It actually enhances your beauty and it diminishes nothing about you. Thank you. And I know sometimes it might feel like you're labeled with something. It might come with feeling of shame. Yeah. It might come with a sense of um, doom because now you're just like, well, what happens from here? Yeah. But I it's rested so strongly on my spirit to say, yeah. it, Leela, it is going to be one of your superpowers. Thank you. You know, it's going yeah, to man. be a superpower. Ultimately, if I were to say to you, what is your, what's your biggest hope and dream for yourself? What would that be? My biggest hope and dream for myself. Well, I would like for my life and my story to inspire other young people who may be navigating the same thing, going through the same thing, especially young girls. Yeah. You get me? There's a young girl somewhere in the ghetto who feels like, you know, they have no idea what they're going to do with their life. They have no idea what direction their life is going, is going into. They may be battling even mental illnesses and just not sure how it's going to work out. I would just love for them to know that at the end of the day, Leela Ike is a human being first. That part. You get what I say? I'm a human girl with hands and legs and foot and a mind of my own that sometimes isn't even my own. I don't even have control over it. You get what I say? And I'm behind all of this is a whirlwind may I navigate. You know, and I just want my story, my life, my music more than anything to inspire people. Because yeah. every, every single thing I believe in and everything I stand for is in my music. Ooh. You know? Yes. So I just want to be an inspiration. Yeah. Um, I'm positive that no one has ever asked you this, but I'm going to go there. I would love to hear your call center voice because I actually wanted to ask her. We said you're at the call center. I was about to be like, you call center? Can I hear your call center voice, please? Chop the line voice. All right, All right hold on. Let me, let me ring the phone for you. Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we doing a, does the phone ring with a regular Jamaican ring or is it like a UK ring? What we're doing? Tell me what we're doing. Give me the, you, me the, UK, the UK ring. Sure, no problem. Ready? <laughs> Hello, thank you so much for calling StubHub. You're speaking with Leela. How may I help you today? <laughs> Yo, that was my life every day from 8 o'clock, no, from 11 until 11. Oh I would not gosh. stop speaking from 11 until 11. But you know, I have to ask you because you are so no nonsense. How much people you drape up when you're no. at a job? Let's just say um, <laughs> between 2000 and... The end of 2015 to 18, I've probably worked at all the call centers at the time. <laughs> Trust um, me. So from that, we're going to say you probably weren't very good at it? No, man, it's not even very good at it. It's just 
as you say, you know, you're going to have some people that call you and say, are you black? I say, no. yes, I'm black. I'm black. You got that question? Yeah. No. I don't want to talk to a black person. That's all right. Next. Trust me, trust it's me. Done with you. <laughs> so it's it's it, it was it was rough, man, and it's just the talk from yeah, talk yeah. nonstop. Q hours. But you don't full. even love talk. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know how you did that, when you say call center to my thing. Well, when my thing bought my bills, like my liquor rent, when so I have to pay, it's called survival. Like food, it's the survival. Just do what you have to do. Exactly. Yeah. If I were to ask you to give me your top three life hacks. So if you were to say to people, you know, I think these three things are the things that can get you through life or help you navigate tough times. Now for your Sajikor life hacks. What would Leela's top three life hacks be? Top three life hacks. You know, sir, it's really recently me started paying attention to all of those things because yeah. I really need those hacks. You get what I mean, yeah. sir? Yeah. But, um... Talk to yourself. Mm. Have a conversation with it. Like, become a friend of yourself. Ooh, a word, you, you know? know? Yeah. A word. Uh, me, me I wonder how I'm going to get no word the whole <laughs> interview. You know? The <laughs> whole interview, we can't I get no word. I want to Yeah, but like, sometimes you just feel like you just don't know what's going on and you stress yeah. out and you have to actually sit down and talk to yourself. Like, yes. yo, you know, say everything is all right, though. Yeah, you feel so? Yeah. Trust me, I've been doing that. I've been doing that. Another thing is, um, I feel like being active. Yes. Being active has been helping me a lot. Like being in the gym, you know, swimming. Mm -hmm. Any little thing me can get for kind of get me out of the house, especially when you go through like depression and them thing there. Yes. Because it, it have a thing where it just cloak you and make you feel like yes. nothing else matters other than this bed that you're you wrap up in and thing. Yeah. So go outside, you know, get some sun. That's the third thing. Sun, sunlight is is very important. Absolutely. Just we take it for granted in the Jamaica, no you know. Man, you know. Go, sunlight and worse you live on an island where you get such nice sunlight. Sunlight sure. very important. So sunlight, talk to yourself, stay, stay active. active. I love that. Mm -hmm. So I know that you really want to be a mom, right? Are we going to run yes. these people through what you think you want to do? Yeah, man. Because I mean. How many children do you want? Ideally, yeah. I want twins, mm -hmm. boys. You've named them already? Yeah, man. Yes, ma'am. No, man. <laughs> what have you? Um, so, well, it changes every year, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now is Icon and Ike. Oh. Last year, it was Blessings and Light. Oh. Yeah, but you like that one, they don't? I, I do. Yeah. Can come you here, tell? Blessings. Light, come for your food now. That's our vibe. So, oh. do you know you actually really should do that when you're naming your children? Yeah. Because you need and to it's know word it's sound. sound. It's word sound. It's word like, sound you know, yeah, yeah. That's so, right. Feel like I'm going to work with the blessings and light for but the I first time. I like Icon name. too. Icon is I like a nice Ike too. One too. What does Ike mean? All right, so Ike, actually, when I just came to Kingston, I met this young man that I was very infatuated with. Yeah. His name Ike Chuko, big up yourself. <laughs> um, uh, so, when, when he told me his name, I thought it was just because I met him at Yui, so I thought it was one of those like dorm jokes. Nicknames, yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, when he told me his name, I was just like laughing, like, how did you end up getting that name? And he's like, oh, you know, his dad is Nigerian, mm -hmm. grew up in Nigeria. So, Aike Chuko actually means God is powerful. Ooh. And it was around the time when, you know, you just had try to figure out where my artist's name I'm gonna be and all mm -hmm. of that. And so I told him that I would use his whole name because I just found it profound. But then I feel like I went to both this couple stage shows and realized that the Aike Chuku never the the chuku, translate the like, <laughs> like the Iki Chike beer things. <laughs> and the Chukita girl, like, is it me? And it's like me, I Not said, Chukita. no. People have problem with Aike. The amount of people call me Lila, Iki, Lila, Aike. You know, so that's, I just decided to shorten it. So that's where the Ike come from. <laughs> it's the yeah. Ike for me. Ike Chuku. Anyways, do you know there's a security guard that I used to go to this gym, right? Yeah. And every single day for years, you know, the security guard would open the barrier and say to me every morning. What? Every morning. Morning, Miss Windy. <laughs> <laughs> it's windy. Every, windy. I'm like, Yendi, Windy. Yo, so trust yeah, me. Ike is expected yeah. from Ike. Jamaicans, them just confident in <coughs> Look here. 
you know? First of all, right now, everywhere I go, I just Ikea. And I'm like, do you understand that there's a whole other artist with name Ikea? You know? Yeah. yeah Leela Ikea. What's next for Leela? Well, what's next? Um, I have a song that I'm going to be releasing soon. A song called True Love. And I'm very excited for that song because I wrote that song almost seven months ago. And it's crazy how the lyrics to the song applies to everything that I'm going through. And I think that everybody right now can relate to it mm. one way or another. So that's the next thing to release that. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm currently working on my album too. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, what's the very first thought that comes across Leela's mind today? Lord God. A music thing. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> as me wake, Jesus Christ, a music thing. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm that type of person where like, my career constantly they on my brain. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I wake up sometimes as Leela Ike in 2016. Mm. You know, me still, me still not realize, say, you do realize that you've accomplished a lot and right. you can kind of relaxed but it's like for me as my wake is just lord god like the music thing i have that for me have this video yeah so <laughs> um in 2015 i went to thailand yeah and i sat with a monk oh that's dope and did i was in Phuket, yeah. and i did like three four days with this monk yeah. and he said something to me that's never left me and i'm going to say it to you um, because it's helped me with my anxiety. And what he said was, the key to easing your anxiety, so anxiety happens because we either live in the future or we live in the past yeah. in our mind. We're thinking about what happened and what you did and what you could have changed or what coming next. And, and he said, the key to a happy mind is to give your mind a home. Hmm. And he said, when you give your mind a home, your mind stays in the present. So you focus on what is in front of you now that you're grateful for. You bring your awareness to your toes, your hands, your yeah, body, yeah, your, yeah. Your, your nice arms at your yeah. pump. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> and you keep your mind in the present. And yeah. when you give your mind a home, it allows you not to focus in the, Lord God, the music thing. Yeah? <laughs> That's a word. Uh, oh, yeah. touche, Lila, touche. <laughs> I'm going well, to play yeah. a game with you. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I am. Are you, for any game? Any game. You're down? Yeah. I wonder if you know saying so you're not ready for this though. Lord, another thing I'm going to put nothing in my mouth. Who said that? You know the guy, I see you do a thing where like you have to put something in your Who mouth. Who said that? Okay, all right. Somebody said that? From another that, I'm good. Well, it's a good thing that they're sanitized and ready. That's oh exactly what it God. is. <laughs> Yo, you see your words sound powerful, man? I say, are you taught the Jesus thing? Jesus Christ. But you know what it is? You did feel it. Yo, no, sir. You didn't feel it. Mouth God. <laughs> so. All right. How this <clears> work now? Do you have only ever done this one time? So I'm so surprised. I've never you... done it. Oh, At but me th me not tell you to watch your thing then, so, man. I, well, you I tell, tell no you lies. It. But you keep it real. It might yeah. feel a little damp, the paper toilet, that's because yeah. it's freshly cleaned. Right? You sure? Girl, me not I don't talk. Me <laughs> I tell you straight. Oh, so, put this in my mouth. you do this now. These side pieces, you go in here. Oh, I'm mean, that. Oh, I lied. The next so. way. Just kidding. Uh huh. So the short one, the long one inside. Oh, God. There you go. Oh. Uh, no, you had uh, the whole thing in there. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, the long one. So you need the short one outside. Yeah, yeah, no, that matter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, see there now. Yeah, my little it's really clean. Ta da! Oh, your teeth hurt. You're not, yes, sir. You hurt her. Yeah. You, you, um, you elastic snatch your outfit. Yes. Yeah. I deliberately did that. Did you? <laughs> Is it deliberate? Yeah. Oh, and look at mom. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> that's why this day I just okay. You don't say you got start drooling. <laughs> not you drooling already. On national TV. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know. So. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I glass in my hand. Original. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk to you real nice. This is the Mastercard priceless moment. So, I'm gonna tell you something. 
Yeah. And you're going to tell me what I said. All right. Okay? Okay. So, <laughs> I am so happy that you are here today. I'm so happy you're here today. Right, that's so. Right, true. Right, true. <laughs> Hold on. You telling me or I telling you? I'm going to go to the office. I'll take it. I can tell you something. Um... <laughs> This game is ridiculous. This game is ridiculous. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm actually kidding. So the actual game is, I want you to sing oh, a lyric God. and I'll tell you which song you're singing. All right. You're not another one, you do. Hmm? You're not going to do that. No, that's not fair, Leo. You can't <laughs> do that to me. You don't want an exclusive song. Yeah, give you an exclusive. All right. I'll right. You can't do exclusive like that. Dig you. <laughs> not the dig you. <laughs> All right. It's hard, it's really hard to stay up with everything. Happening all around is like all I see is sin. Hate is in the air, he loves vision. I'm just trying to balance, I'm just going to do a thing. Trying to hide the little light that's the hot day in the world. Take this out, I need to hear this. <laughs> oh, I need Come to hear this. It? So you get oh. it out of your mouth. Come I know you don't want to hear it. Oh, I heard one line that made me say, oh, where no, no, no. Where mm -mm. Where about sin. Yeah. Yeah, man, a song called True Love, you know? It's hard, it's really hard to stay up with everything. Happening all around is like all I see is sin. Hate is in the air, love is diminishing. I'm just trying to balance and just want to me thing. Trying to find the little light that's left out there in the world. Want to use it and go inspire every boy and girl. If you make them know, say love is still the ultimate goal. Put that light within your heart and get fire in your soul. But it's hard. Oh gosh, I say it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> New thing, people. Still there, so. man, I do the right thing. True love. Think you're going to like that one day. Well, you know, say so you mash me up. Yeah? Do you got to do bar? <laughs> you better stop that. <laughs> Not you loading me up. You know, so me, I try to hold it. You know, yeah, man, I saw for. music to make people feel, man. But you know, that's also your gift. Yeah. <coughs> I think so. Thank you. It is your gift. No, Leela, thank you. <laughs> because thank you that despite um, how difficult it has been, yeah. despite how low you felt, you're still pushing. Yeah, man, for sure. Have to. Yeah. The only way to get through it is through it. Oh, a word. That's a word. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A whole word. Yeah. The only way to get through it mm. is through it. If there is one thing that you'd want to say to the people who love you unconditionally and have been <coughs> waiting to see you and hear you, yeah. what's the one thing you'd tell to them? Um, I'd like to say thanks, you know. Thanks for your support, thanks for, you know, just all the positive energy. Cause you know, it's very important to have people who can see past all the facade and all the noise and all the bullshit. And no say the main thing here, the main purpose of Lila Ike is music. It's good music and nothing else matters. You know, so I appreciate the people who are patient. You know, I appreciate the people who have been reaching out and sending, you know, just positive vibes and making them know, making me know that they're still here. They're waiting. They're excited. Um, yeah, I just want to say thanks. I appreciate you guys so much. If 27 year old Lila could say something to five year old Alicia, what would she say? 27-year-old Leela could say something to 5-year-old Leela. What would she say? Um, you're a real one. Mm. Yeah. You're a real G. For sure. That's what I'd say. Just and know, say you're a real G. That G can be good and gangster. What does I say? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The buddies, the buddies. I have a little gift for you. I like goodies. Another G. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs>
Thank you. I have a little Yendi. bottle of something, something from oh, Appleton Estate for you. Yeah, man, big up Appleton. Appleton Senator out of your cabinet. I mean, <laughs> which one would I get me more stripes? <laughs> no, man, we don't say out of your cabinet. Big up yourself. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, Appleton, I took it out of my cabinet yeah. for Leela. <laughs> no, I appreciate you. Yeah. And I'm dead serious. And I think you know that when I say I am so proud of you. Thank you. What you did today, not easy. Yeah. And what you'll do going forward will not be easy. Yeah. But I'm so sure Thank you'll you. be great. And we're really excited to watch you. Thanks, Yendi. Wait, now you can't. Um. Yeah, I, mean, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity for come and speak about everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because as I say right now, I'm going through my healing process and yeah. navigating life and everything. And only one time may I do this kind of interview. You see me? This is the only time may I do that type of interview, yeah. So I thank you for that. I'm honored. I'm honored. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> Girl! Odyssey with Yendi Untold Journeys was brought to you in partnership with Sagicor and MasterCard. Grab yourself some Appleton and tap into a new world of flavor. Have a snack for this episode? Well, grab your Sun Mix and taste the good life.